the space available, but I do still have a driveway, so I'll still be bringing you videos um, with that out of the way. This video was requested by a Marty. Uh, really strange for me to have a video requested, but I thought I'd help him out, and uh, hopefully it'll help others out as well. So uh, this is one of the questions I asked. So how to check your coolant level and top up. Uh, now this applies to most cars, however, uh, specifically we're gonna be doing it on this W203C class that I have behind me, which is my wife's and mine, daily driver. Uh, only car I've got one minute, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, good car, um, and let me show you. So first, pop the bonnet. The release is under the uh, steering wheel to the right. Pull it, and it will release up onto this stage where it is. I'll bring you in. And then there's a little tab here. Pull it, and also just grab underneath the bonnet and lift it up. Don't try and lift it up on this plastic tab. There is a chance you might break it. And then don't forget, you can put the um, a lot of the Mercedes of this era to service mode where you can open the bonnet a bit larger. So on the strut here, little tab, press it in while pulling up on this. And it locks upright, so you've got a lot more room to work with. Very handy. Next, you want to locate your coolant reservoir. Now, on a lot of cars, you have sort of a big plastic engine cover, um, or if it's an, you know maybe an older car or a more uh, smaller car, um, like a hatchback or something that might just be the engine here you'll see a tank with liquid in it and there usually is a symbol which looks like this on a picture of a, it's meant to be a radiator which you can kind of see it's got fluid in it radiator shapes uh, tank on the top it's like the old style radiators so yeah that is what you're looking for marked on a tank with a liquid in it now, I'm going to put this on, pretend you didn't see me take this off. Once you've located your coolant reservoir, you're going to want to learn how to read it and read the level of your coolant. So once you've located, on the side, on the clear plastic bit, which you can see the level in, there will be two levels, there will be a line. Sometimes it's quite hard to see depending on how discoloured your expansion tank is. Mine's kind of hidden behind the uh, little HID kit ballast I've got put there, which I don't want to remove and have to re-zip tie, but I'll is that picture now. And that's what they usually look like, so you've got a level of min and a max. Again, it can be quite hard to see, and with them being plastic and usually kind of white clear, it's uh, it can be quite awkward to see. But you can what you can do sometimes is, uh, if you're struggling to see where the actual level is, Give the car a jiggle, give the expansion tank a jiggle, just being careful. And sometimes you might not see the level and then when you see the, the fluid move, you can then go, oh, okay, that's where my level is. And if your coolant level is low, you need to top it up. If it's just a little bit low, um, so you're okay to just use water. Now, there's many debates whether to use normal water or deionized water. The, uh, basically, the argument behind it is that deionized water has no... Um, distillates in it or mineral deposits um, dissolved in the water whereas tap water will have you can cause lime scale mineral deposits and whatnot now for most cars it's probably not an issue to just use normal water and i certainly always have if you're mixing also with coolant and your mixture is sort of like 50 50 or the recommended dilution ratio of water to coolant you're all right if you start getting just water in there then one your cooling is not going to be very good and two you do risk to run the risk of those deposits but the coolant itself the actual mixture helps um you know reduce uh, the effects of that so to open the cap you want to make sure your engine's cold or very very mildly warm and if it's very mildly warm you want to be really careful it does have a warning on it but you'll just want to open it and crack it off very slowly have a towel on your hand because if this goes and you get chemical burns and and you know because the coolant can be really hot much hotter than normal water it, it can it can mess you up badly my engine's cold take it off and this is where if you're filling up a more substantial amount i you know you put in some fresh coolant in the car or you, you, your level's quite low this is where you want to follow the mixing ratio on the coolant that you've got and get the correct coolant for your car and blah blah, blah. Um, but i'm just topping up with a bit of water my level's pretty much okay so i'm just going to put a tiny bit in but you literally just want to not spill it everywhere. Put some uh, fluid, whichever you're topping up with, in there. And recheck the level on the side. 
on the gauges, make sure you haven't put too much in, which can be bad as well, because it can overpressurize the system. So, you know, maybe take some out with a turkey baster or a pipette or something. If you have, put the cap on, and you really, really want to make sure it's on there tight. You don't want this flying off when the system's pressurized. Now you are free to uh, check, make sure your level's fine. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much how you do it. So I appreciate that I might be teaching some of you to suck eggs. However, it was requested and I thought I'd help someone out. And also, um, people who are just really wanting to do the basics of maintenance on the car, rather than, you know, you don't want to have to take the car to a friend or a garage just to check the fluids and whatnot. It's something basic that you can easily do at home and keep on top of it and keep your car running tip top. And uh, yeah, not have to worry about it and you not have to pay for it, essentially. If you take it to Halfords, they'll probably charge you about 40 quid to do it. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.